In this video, I'll be giving you 17 things you must do in Sharagao. This is your ultimate guide to the beautiful island in the Philippines. The island is located in the southeast of the country and is an absolute paradise and is known as the surfing capital of the Philippines. You will most likely arrive at the Del Carmen Airport in Sharagao Island. And once you touch down there, you'll get a shared minibus to your hotel. This costs 300 pesos per person if you are located in General Luna. If you don't know me, I'm John. I spent over two weeks exploring the beautiful tropical paradise of Sharagao, and I'm going to give you so much valuable information. So before we start, just please hit the subscribe button. It really does help me out. So let's start with number one, and that is come to Sharagao Wake Park. The Wake Park is located just a 15 minute ride from the General Luna town. And honestly, it's one of the funnest activities you can do on the island. The wake park has literally been cut out of the palm trees and it looks so insane, especially at sunset. Even if you're a beginner or you're advanced, they take anyone and honestly, if you've just started like me and Amelia had, you can even stand up in your first session. It was also insane just watching the pros do their things with their flips and all their tricks. Amelia absolutely killed it at the wakeboarding. I think I still need some practice though. He did say I was a bit of a pro, so I was quite proud of myself. It is such a cool sport and we kind of want to do more of it now. Let's move on to number two and this is probably one of the biggest reasons people come to the island and that is surfing. There are so many different surf spots all over Shaogao, right up into the north and also down south. There are so many different surf lessons, surf instructors, surfboards to hire, whatever you're looking for you can find it on this island. If you're a beginner surfer or an advanced surfer there's different waves and different beaches you can go to which will fit your difficulty or whatever it is. Now number three is an epic spot where you can do big rock jumps and you can chill on the beach. It's such a cool spot. The name is like Magapunko Po? Po? I, oh, I've tried pronouncing this thing a hundred times and I still can't do it, so please forgive me. This spot is absolutely legendary and is so fun, but you can only go here at low tide. Look up on the internet and look when the low tide is. You have to walk around the side of the beach and then you go to these rock pools and you'll see locals and other tourists jumping off the rocks into the water and it is pretty deep and the water is so blue and super clear. The best way to get to this spot is by scooter and once you get there it's an entrance fee of 50 pesos per person. I think there's also a parking fee of like 10 or 20 pesos as well. If you want to jump off the rocks I would highly recommend bringing water shoes because the rock is super sharp. Once you finish jumping off the cliffs I highly recommend just chilling on the beach. It is a beautiful beach, one of my favorite in Shargao. Also, I don't know how to say Shargao, 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 what is it? I'm really struggling here. I've said it too many times now. The next spot is the palm tree viewpoint. Again, this is a super popular spot and you can kind of see how many palm trees are on Shargao. There's basically a big flat layer in the middle and just gazillions of palm trees. It's a cool spot to take an Instagram shot. It doesn't take long, maybe like 15 minutes there and you're pretty much done. This isn't the only spot. There are so many different cool tropical palm tree roads along Sharagao. So stop off, take some photos, get those Instagram shots. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram because that's where you get the live updates for what we're doing. And yeah, why haven't you already? <laughs> Moving on to number five, and that is Cloud9. This spot is super cool and is basically one of the best surf spots in the world. So if you want to watch the pros, then you can. There's a big broad walk. Unfortunately, last year in Typhoon Odette, it actually got destroyed. So they're currently rebuilding it. But hopefully by the time you get there, it's back to what it used to be. The waves there are super, super large. So if you are a beginner, maybe stick to the smaller waves. But honestly, it's such a cool place just to chill on the beach. Loads of people gather there at sunset and it's just a great atmosphere. Currently to get into the cloud nine area you have to pay a hundred pesos per day per person but that money apparently is going towards building the broadwalk. Also at cloud nine you can rent loads of surfboards, there's loads of surf instructors if you are a beginner. So the next place you have to go to in Shagao is the cave pool and this is a much less touristy spot than other spots in Shagao and I highly recommend it still because it's super fun. It costs 100 pesos per person and that comes with a guide but also you should probably tip the guide on top. So this activity goes through a cave and you can actually see bats inside. And then at the end, you can do super cool jumps and go on a rope swing. This spot is not far from some other spots, which I'm gonna be telling you later in the video. So number seven is a super cool activity, which I think is a must and probably one of the top five things you have to do 
on the island, and that is Sugba Lagoon. This place is like no other. It's like Raja Ampat in Indonesia. It is absolutely beautiful. The water is so clear. It's just like a cool jungle feel, almost like mountains in the sea. It's awesome. There's also a super cool jump spot where you can go off the dive board. We went on a private boat and I think it costs like 2,000, 3,000 pesos for the private tour. I will check that and put it down below. You can drive there by yourself or go on a land tour which does loads of different spots and that will be a cheaper option for you if you're on a budget. We rented a paddle board and paddled around the islands through the water and it even rained and it was super tropical and just epic, epic vibes. One of my favorite spots on the island, definitely check it out. Moving on to number eight, this activity is one of the only places you can do this in the entire world and that is swim with jellyfish. We just got into a jellyfish lake and we're surrounded by jellyfish, which is crazy. And no, you're not gonna get stung. These jellyfish are actually stingless and so you can touch them and they will literally touch you and you don't get hurt. I don't even know why this is true, but it is super cool and such a weird experience. Honestly, getting in the water, we were pretty scared. We were like, are they gonna sting? But it's all right, it's good fun, but weird. The Jellyfish Lake is located in Sohoten Cove and so you have to do that as a package tour. I'm gonna to be telling you about Sohoten Cove a bit later in this video. Right, let's talk a little bit about transport and how to get around. If you're looking to get around, the best way is by scooter. It just gives you the most freedom and if you wanna rent a scooter, the best way to do that is to ask your hotel. They might rent them themselves or they can point you in the right direction. We rented ours for 400 pesos a day. You know, if you're on a bit more of a budget, you can probably get it for 300 pesos a day. So if you're not confident on a scooter, you can use the classic Filipino tricycles, which are super cheap and a great way to get around. And again, if you wanna do the tours, you can do land tours, and that prevents you having to go on a scooter if you're not confident on a bike. Don't push yourselves, be careful, and wear your helmet. Number nine, come eat dinner at Kermit. They've got amazing cocktails, amazing food, and even better dessert. You are not going to be disappointed. Kermit is a resort and a restaurant, and honestly, it has some of the best food on the island. If you like pizza, if you like pasta, then you're going to be in for a treat. We had an amazing pizza at this restaurant, and also we tried like this seafood linguine pasta, and it was unreal. I think it might have been the best pasta dish I've ever tried. They've also got cocktails, gym bar, they've got a big old pizza oven. They've got everything. So if you like food, check it out. Also, if you are into yoga, then you should do the yoga sessions at Kermit. Amelia did them and said they were super cool with an epic area where you can look over their new pool. Spot number 10 is a spot which doesn't have many tourists on it. And there's two epic beaches near Super Lagoon. Now I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how to pronounce these. So please give me a break. But I'm gonna give it a go for you. Pamoaram Beach, which is actually part of the Sugba Lagoon area, and then Kawahagun Island. And these beaches are absolutely beautiful. The Kawahagun Island is actually has a sandbar and it is super beautiful, super clear blue water. And honestly, from the drone, it looks even better. From both of these beaches, you can actually eat and there's a restaurant, so you can have a full day there chilling and you can get boats here from the Del Carmen port. Now moving on to the next one, number 11. This spot is super, super popular. It is like the picture of Sharagao and the spot that everyone knows about before they go and that is the rope swing. To get into this spot, it only costs 20 pesos and it is super, super fun. Unfortunately, they don't have the rope swing anymore, but they built this like wooden kind of jump spot and so you can jump into the river. But be careful because it's not actually that deep on the river. It is super cool just along this river because there's palm trees either side. The other thing you can do here is actually get a little boat which is super low to the water and you go to like this secret little lagoon and once you get there there is like little pigs there to go on the little boat ride to the secret lagoon it costs 500 pesos for the boat now moving on to number 12 this is a place i promised to tell you more about and this is sohoten cove this place is magnificent but do be warned it is a far away from general luna i think it took us like two hours to get there and then it's like i think it took us three hours to get back because of the winds and stuff so just be prepared for an uncomfortable long ride on the boat and you will get wet 
So maybe bring a waterproof bag. It costs quite a bit of money, especially for Filipino standards. And it costs 2,700 pesos per person. This obviously includes everything. So all the fees, all the transport, as it is very far, but is well worth it. This is where you get to go to the jellyfish uh, lake, which I told you about earlier. And you basically go on a little boat tour around the islands. You also get amazing buffet lunch with so much food, you won't be able to eat it all. And then you go to a couple of other spots as well. We even saw a little stingray, which was pretty cool. Even though this trip is quite expensive, I do recommend it. Swimming with the jellyfish, going around this Raja Ampat kind of area it is so cool and worth the money. I'll leave a link down in the description to go on that tour. Now I'm gonna recommend somewhere else that you should eat if you're in Shaogao and that is Cavadas. This place is always super busy and honestly, when they run out of food, they run out of food. It's basically like a buffet style place and you can choose so many different food, Filipino food, but they also do like pasta, they even do brownies. There is so much choice and honestly, I don't know how they do it, but every dish just tastes so, so good. The other great thing about this place, it is super cheap and affordable. So if you are on a budget as a backpacker, then I recommend coming here. Now, number 14 is not a super cool thing to do, but one of the things to do is to just chill out. At the end of the day, you are on a super chilled surf island vibe. So if you want to just go to the beach, you just want to chill out in some of the super cool cafes, get smoothie bowls all day, then you can do that. Don't feel like pressured to always do loads of stuff whilst you're traveling, because honestly, traveling can be quite exhausting. Now, this is probably the most popular tour to do on Shaogao, and that is the island hopping tour. The Philippines is famous for its island hopping tours, but this one is super cool and quite unique. So each island is kind of different. First of all, you've got Naked Island. And if you don't know, no, you are not naked on that island. It's just bare. There is nothing on it but sand. It's basically a sandbar. There's also Daku Island and Guayam Island. And highly recommend checking these out because it is cool. Who doesn't love island hopping in the Philippines, having an epic buffet lunch? You're gonna love these islands. Now, number 16 is head right up north to the untouristy part of the island. Once you go past the rock pools on the island, there's not as many tourists. The, the locals are super friendly and help you out. This island is covered in palm trees and you'll be able to go to beaches and be the only ones on them. There's one beach you should check out and that, that is Algeria Beach right up in the northwest, northeast. And then there's also a waterfall, which is the only waterfall on the island, which we didn't go to, but I think you should if you're there for quite a while. Now, number 17 is the last thing you should do in Shaogao, but I'm actually gonna just give you loads of tips. Also, there are loads of hostels in Shaogao, so if you're on a budget, there's loads of surf hostels and places you can meet loads of people. Also, don't worry about ATMs. There are loads of ATMs on the island. Also, remember Shaogao isn't super developed, but it is developing fast. This is going to be the new Bali. Hopefully, it doesn't go too far because this place is so, so beautiful right now, but hopefully it won't be destroyed by mass tourism. Guys, if you've got any questions about Shaogao, please leave them in the description. And if you live in Shaogao or you've been to Shaogao, please feel free to answer any questions or recommend other things to do on this beautiful tropical island of Shaogao. Thank you so much for watching. Please, before you go, before you go, just hit subscribe. It helps us out to keep traveling, sharing these videos, giving you advice. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video. See you later. Bye.